You might have heard about horrible histories, but what about horrible science? This is a lightsaber. This is my hand. And this is me with a new haircut. Hi guys and welcome to a new episode on this channel. Today we will be talking about... Nope, not horrible science as you might have guessed since this title has horrible in it, but horrible science. And let's get started. Now, what is this talking about in horrible science? Well, since this is the first book, and the first book is about chemical chaoses, it literally talks about chemicals. It talks about the chemicals that make this eraser, this other eraser, this top secret notepad that I cannot show you because it's, as it is in the name, top secret. Here is this projector, some kind of triang triangular kind of ruler, my watch, my glasses, or even my eyes. Or maybe the eyeballs themselves on my tongue of tattoo. I said, in translation, my tongue itself too. Have you understood that? Or a lot of other musical instruments like these. And that's what horrible science is actually about. Science is about stories. We test our stories to see what is true and what is false. If it is false, we took them out. And I invent a new story that is, seems more true from the facts that we learned. But as soon as science and the storytelling of science keeps on advancing, we test our original stories that are said to be true once again, but then finds out. But then when it is found out that it is not true in the modern day, we, see re we make another story. And if that makes us accurate, well, I don't know what to say about here. There is loads and loads of things that we need to talk about in these kinds of places of the world. But however, there are lots and lots of things that should have happened in science, but have not yet happened. Well, teleportation? It shouldn't have happened, but it kind of did. First of all, why teleportation didn't happen literally? It shouldn't have happened literally because we didn't have, well, probably in my vision, we didn't have the technologies to make it. Rather, some people have been to able to teleport stuff. Not humans, though, but just some laser lights, such as that lightsaber I showed you. And sometimes we can eat, probably later, later they experimented on these whole loads and loads of atoms, but then failed. So here is actually the true, true facts about teleportation, which we'll not get into very quickly since we're not talking about teleportation. No teleportation. Teleportation is banned. All right. First of all, there are loads and loads of chemicals. And there is actually a way to show all these chemicals that are made from atoms in this kind of chart called the periodic table of elements. And this heavy book, other book, which talks about the periodic table of elements. It's pretty heavy. And on page 14 of this book by DK, one of my favorite book resources, it talks about the periodic table elements. Like these. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, all those types of elements you might even heard. And even the newest ones such as organism, Mendelevian. By the way, it's fed by Mendelev right here. Yes. I actually also have a poster of the periodic table on my wall, but it's just going to get complicated when I try to show it. Okay. Now, periodic tables in modern day, we count them. We we group them by their protons, but also, but long ago we used uh, weights to to find out and group the periodic tables themselves. Also, there were gaps in the olden day versions, and also that those were used to well kind of predict the future elements. Okay. And then there were even some kinds, some types of things that happened here. Now, I don't really have a science teacher now. But however, it says that it is your science teacher who gets shrunk by this shrink ray and goes down to the size of an atom. And here are some things that are very uninteresting and also false about this. First of all, how can you be as small as an atom and breathe at the same time when the stuff that you breathe right now is actually made from atoms? That's the point here. How can you get into atom size without dying, or f at least fainting, with dying when the particles that you usually breathe are made from atoms themselves? That's the problem here, guys. Or, well, uh, you might be able to, you might can just like breathe the electrons or something, but since there's a book, this is okay, okay? And then, second of all, second of all, here are some ways to dispose murder. And these might not be helpful. First of all, there was some kind of murder, and this guy was accused of it. He was the killer, by the way. He's like, how can he accuse me of murder when there is no body? And this is what he did. He actually thrown the body. He actually thrown the body into some acid. 
all the live stuff died out, but then there are some plastic things that survived. Now the body was actually a scroll in a tank from SpongeBob, and the only thing that remained was this plastic kind of water thing. And that actually survived. That can actually survive the acidic damage. And then some. And then how they found out that there was proof in the murder was this: they found out they found some teeth. They found some plastic teeth. They found some plastic teeth in it, and then well, boom! They said that is murder. And then the dentist, and then they checked every dentist who gave her the teeth, and she's like, and one dentist said, "Huh, I recognize that smell anywhere." And then that's how they actually got dead. And here is something that really happened here.、Uh, first of all, there was this kind of diamond, which was a very deadly. First of all, there was it was said that it was. From the statue of a god, and that some Inca people actually took it up and said, "I curse you! I curse the diamond! Whoever owns the diamond is cursed." Then the diamond was sold to Mary Antoinette, and then it was stolen. And after she got her head was chopped off, and then later it and then later it was given to a very good prince. But then he was overthrown by his own son. And then, and then that diamond. He also had the diamond. Then the diamond was given to a car dealer, and who died、uh, having the diamond in his pocket, with his pocket, and died by a car coming off the cliff. This is all true history, so guys. And then, and then, and then a wife. And then a wife, a、uh, and then a a, a, bo- a man got it, and then said, "Bad luck! I better give it to someone." Ran all the way to someone and. Definitely had no had good luck, and gave it to a woman. Said, "I and I don't want it back." And she had some kind of malaria and all that stuff, some diseases. Then later, it was given to a museum official who's gonna go to give the diamond on some display. And then his he will, his airplane actually got delayed by four hours, and his car crashed into a tree. Wow, lots and lots of bad luck. And the diamond dealing didn't end there. Actually, so first of all, somebody found the largest diamond in the world. He started taking it out with his penknife, gave it to someone as a present, and then somebody tried to cut the diamond into equal pieces. Whatever tool they use, they tried using a tool, but then found out that the tool just actually the blade actually got broken. Because of this, three very simple reason. One of the reasons is this. First of all, the tool was not strong enough, and so it broke. And then later, they smashed it with a hammer, which was strong enough to break the diamond. Diamonds broke into pieces accidentally, but the person, the diamond cutter, actually fainted. Then another thing is, and then there were loads and loads of good news and deadly news, and these are some of the most chaotic chemicals. <laughs> these oil landscapes that actually drowned with oil, and these kind of chaotic bomb explosives. And the Alfred Nobel, there were some pages, possible pages of Alfred Nobel's diaries, who actually wrote about dynamite. And said he was going to give up diamond art, but then eventually started experimenting with diamond art again. And that, and in this book, it doesn't say that the chemicals are actually chaotic. It's the humans that make the chemicals chaotic, and in some ways that is true. Humans use the chemicals to find new substances, but they are chaotic. They can be for good or they can be for bad. But however, there are loads and loads of good things that chemicals can do for us. For well, for good things for some certain people, and also some stink bombs too, which actually make everybody stinky. And that's where a lot of things can happen in chemical chaoses. And in this chemical chaos, it also shows the origins of the Alfred Nobel Prize. And that is where a lot of things is actually happening here. And that is the end of this chemical chaoses. And remember, before I end this video, remember this: it's not the chemicals that are chaotic, but you. Humans who make the chemicals chaotic. You might not think you might be a chemist, but a cooker is a chemist. So yeah, that is basically it for this episode. As I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Please like my new hairstyle, my head, and I'll see you in the next episode. Shunhan out. Peace.